Hi guys, this is a video tutorial about um, or pre-processing seven test images using FSL feed GUI and um, some of the scripts that run natively in FSL. There are a few steps um, that one needs to do before getting um, the pre-processing um, batch constructed in within the feed GUI and these are the steps that I'm going to just um, mention briefly but I'm not going to um, demonstrate them but I will walk through the um, pre-processing steps more detailedly. So we usually start with um, downloading the DICOM images. The image library that I'm, I'm using in this video is a 7 test image library um, from a task that we are running in one of our current studies and um, what we are collecting is a bunch of um, structural and functional images and first these DICOM images needs to be converted to nifty uh, for the subsequent analysis. What I would then do is um, reorient all my structural and functional images to the standard space and this is done by FSL reorient to standard um, function and in, in this um, imaging study we have a limited field of view and um, tilted acquisition angle which means that we don't have the whole brain coverage from the functional runs and as a result in order to um, sort of aid our pre-processing we also collect a single volume of whole brain functional run and this also needs to be um, reoriented to um, the standard space. The same applies for the field map images um, so the, both the magnitude and the phase images needs to be reoriented to the um, standard space and after that I would use FSL Anat uh, for the brain extraction which works better uh, with the 7 testa um, structural images than the standard um, bed function and um, following um, the FSL Anat output um, I would reconstruct um, the field map RADS image uh, which is uh, fundamentally important for um, the pre-processing stages uh, where we um, sort of map the functional images onto the structural image and all together to the um, template image. So the important output that we need to achieve is the um, field map Brad's image and um, this we do by using the outputs of the FSL net which would give us um, a binary brain mask and then we pre-process um, the magnitude and the phase image accordingly and we combine all of those into the RADS image um, to aid our um, pre-processing. So after all these um, preparations are done what I would do is um, initiate the feed GUI so I'm not going to set up all this analysis from scratch so what I will do is just load one of the um, batch files that I have already um, prepared for this tutorial. So what we do is we start with selecting our 4D um, data and this is the functional data that we um, need to include to our analysis so we can see here is that the functional run um, I believe is the longer one, yes. So it has 726 volumes and this is the one that we um, select for this um, pre-processing. Once um, we selected our uh, 4D functional images uh, we need to set up output directory. What I usually do is that make the output directory the same as the, f the name of the functional run. So in this instance in this study we have five functional runs in, um, in total and the output directory is 001 referring to the run 1. In this run we, ha we collected 726 volumes and we need to delete five volumes uh, from the beginning of this run because the task uh, refers to the um, 721 volumes um, as it starts on the sixth trigger. And just as a sanity check one can see that uh, the TR that we had is uh, 1.375 um, seconds for this study. Next what we do is go to the pre-stats tab and then um, the first thing that we need to select is the alternative reference image. So this refers to the SBREF images that we reoriented to the um, standard space 
and this is a little bit different than the whole brain that we will use later um, in the subsequent stages of this um, pre-processing. So what I would do is just travel to the corresponding directory and select that SBREF image uh, which will um, give me a, a higher um, sort of depth of information about how to um, pre-process these images than the whole brain functional run because whole brain functional run is something that we collect only once whereas these SBREF images are um, collected specific for each run so I'm using both of these um, to guide this um, pre-processing as much as possible so then you can select this select OK and then motion correction this is the default option in um, FSL so I will leave it as such um, the Mac flirt and then the next thing to do is um, the selecting the field map images. The, so the first one is the field map RADS image that we construct um, using FSL maths um, in the preceding stages and just before um, this analysis. And then the second one is the magnitude image that we um, again construct in the preceding uh, stages and here the important thing is that the magnitude image needs to be reoriented to the um, standard space and then it needs to be batted so it doesn't it shouldn't have any um, skull or any um, membranes uh, in the su subsequent stage what I need to do is um, calculate the effective EPI echo spacing so these usually come from um, the um, protocol um, so one needs to consult their ra radiographers uh, to make sure that um, you have the correct information because it will be um, fundamental for the correct kind of um, registration and then the second one is the EPI TE so this is the echo time when you're setting up your protocol so in this protocol our um, echo time was 19 milliseconds so that's the, that's the value that I um, enter to this analysis Again, the unmorphed direction is something that uh, one needs to consult with the radiographer. Um, in this instance, uh, for these images, we have the negative y direction, which is the unmorphed direction in our case. I'm not going to tamper with the slice timing correction um, settings here. And then the bet is um, sort of selected by default because this actually refers to the functional images, so not the structure image. Um, anymore because this is something we have already done by using FSL and at spatial smoothing is um, obviously one of the things that we need to consider and in this study we are looking specifically at human habenula which is a um, tiny structure um, posterior to the thalamus um, so um, usually the rule of thumb is that uh, one should not set a a uh, smoothing kernel larger than the uh, region of interest in question so habanula is roughly 3 mm millimeter in one direction so this is the um, setting that I um, select for this purpose. Next I go to the registration um, tab and here um, so the first thing that we can do is enter the expanded functional image so this is the whole brain image that I previously mentioned and this is again reoriented to the structural um, standard space and then I'm having the full search and six uh, degrees of freedom um, options selected the second um, image that I need to select is the main structural image so here the FSL gives a warning that and that, that this image have non-brain um, structures already removed for example uh, by using BET but because I used FSL net I will not be going to um, using the raw um, image so this will be this can be found in the special directory which is created automatically by running FSL net and then the image that we need to find here is that T1 bias core underscore brain so this is um, always have this extension and basically a T1 image uh, with the brain extracted again I'm using a full search here with BBR selected and then finally this uh, the standard space is we're going to select one of the standard images but because I'm dealing with seven test images here so I'm sticking with a m one millimeter brain template and then I have the full search with 12 degrees of freedom 
and then I'm also selecting the nonlinear option. The final selection here is the warp resolution, which is by default 10 millimeters, but because I'm dealing with um, seven Tesla images, which are um, of higher resolution, I reduced this by half. And this is just a trial and error kind of um, setting that one can establish. And um, basically to find the sweet sp spot, but usually because the default refers to um, our analysis settings for three Tesla images, so I just um, went for a um, lower uh, warp resolution millimeters and I believe um, this usually produces good um, results for seven Tesla images. After all of these settings I would just double check everything that looks right especially um, the naming convention between the output directories and the inputs and also in the case where um, you are using SPRF images make sure that um, the SPRF image refers to the uh, functional run being collected. So these are the important um, kind of uh, places where small mistakes can happen. And um, after we are happy with all of these settings, uh, basically one can press go and wait for this analysis to finish. So this analysis usually takes roughly around um, seven hours, which is an incredibly long amount of time um, but this happens because the images are very high resolution and then the functional run is reasonably long. So the output result is obviously our um, report.reg uh, which I will show you. So um, this gives us an overview of all the registration and you can see that in our functional run we have limited coverage um, of the whole brain that's why we use the whole brain functional image to aid this registration because otherwise we wouldn't have the majority of the um, dorsal areas and then the supplementary motor cortex and all that um, from this uh, functional run and then you can evaluate how these images look like especially around the cerebellum where um, there seems to be a nice overlap and also the corpus callosum and then the curvatures um, in these subcortical um, regions. What one can do also is look at the unwarping. We would usually expect um, signal dropouts in these um, frontal ventral um, regions which are fairly common as well as the um, temporal lobe, um, anterior temporal lobe and these often come up um, in our um, unwarping. And then you can, one can also evaluate um, sort of the shifts in um, voxels. And usually we have higher positive shifts in the frontal lobe and um, negative shifts in the um, posterior areas. And overall, um, these efforts give a reasonably nice registration and one can see um, the distorted and undistorted um, sort of um, images. And at the very end what one can do is run um, FSLIs actually look at some of these images in more detail. So the first thing that I can do is for example um, this is the first run that we registered and then high res image is um, our betted structural image and then what I'm interested in is the example funk um, to high res which is how the functional runs are mapped onto the um, structural image uh, C 
seems to work very well. And then the last tick that I can add is the white matter ages image. So um, this is the initial underscore high res to high res fast white matter edge um, nifty image. And what I can do is change the coloring on this um, to red so that it will look like the um, output that I had um, in my registration report. So this looked fairly well to me. And then if we go through the chrono slides from right to left, Especially the mapping of the corpus callosum is very, very good. So even if we have, as you can see, we don't have the coverage from the functional images in this um, um, in the dorsal areas, um, because for this study we're only interested in the subcortical um, structures, which we wanted to keep at the very middle of the um, sort of field of view. So even then, the rest of the brain. Um, registration looks fairly well. So using both the um, SPRF image along with a whole brain functional run um, and also using the FSL ANET uh, to guide the brain extraction and subsequent field map construction all helps with um, this pre-processing stages. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this um, informative and do post any questions and I'll try to um, respond to as much as um, possible. Thank you very much.